move on to the matter in hand. It's movie time. Two new movies on the big screen. What you got for us this week? OK, so the longest title, as you were talking about earlier, Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. <laughs> it's a tongue twister. It's a... <laughs> I thought three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri was was long enough. <laughs> no, and the thing is, you can't shorten this either, can you? I don't know how you would shorten it. So the story is about a writer who forms an unexpected bond with the residents of Guernsey Island in the aftermath of World War Two, where she decides to write a book about their experiences during the war. Now, obviously, apart from this being the world's longest title ever, uh, this is also an unofficial Downton Abbey reunion. We have four actors from Downton Abbey in this film. So if you are a Downton Abbey fan, you're going to love this. I'm a Downton Abbey fan. That's why I went to see this. You know, it is absolutely fantastic. But this is a lot less regimented than uh, Downton Abbey is. A lot more um, openness, to be honest. You know, it, does, it doesn't show the working classes against, you know, the upper classes. Um, it's a story of love and about friendship as well. So... What happens is uh, this writer has written a book and it ends up on Guernsey Island and there is this small society, a small literary society who really like it. And one of the young gentlemen there, who is very good looking, has his top off quite a lot in the film, I will say that, um, writes a letter to her and says, can you send us some more books? And she is so fascinated by this society that she decides, I'm going to write an article uh, uh, for a London newspaper about these people who are obviously under, you know, German regime, but are still getting together and doing these like little secret clubs as well so it's really nice and very well and the film is loaded with little jokes and physical comedy moments as well that just make you laugh out loud so there is a lot of humor in it as well and these characters this little society basically they're like a ragtag bunch of people so you know it's not all of the same people and they all bring something unique to this society they are very funny as i said um and the, you know this allows them to just kind of read these books but what happens is one day one of the German officers finds this out so he sits in on one of the meetings and what happens is he falls asleep so then they get the <laughs> the what they would term as I guess kind of illegal books out at that time and they start reading but the German officer is asleep so they actually start to have uh, a more widespread knowledge of these uh, these classic books and uh, then the writer turns up, Juliet Ashton. She's played by Lily James, who obviously was in Downton Abbey. Uh, she was in Cinderella, the Disney film as well. She was recently in Baby Driver. I think she's a terrific actress. I really do. I think she's absolutely outstanding. She's fantastic in this. You know, this film's not going to do much for her career. I will be honest at all. It's a very small film. But at the same time, you can feel... The, just the joy of her being in this film. Every single line of dialogue is uttered with just pure delight. It really is. And she goes on and she tries to help these people of Guernsey to sort of develop themselves to a certain degree, I guess. Uh, the rest of the cast are, they're just fantastic as well. It's a really good cast, to be honest with you. So we have Matthew Good in there as well, Michelle Hoosman, Catherine Parkinson, Penelope Winton and Tom Courtney. I've also got to mention Jessica Brown Finlay is in there as well, who was in Downton Abbey. Now, this is a woman who I really like as an actress. I think she's fantastic. But she's never in enough films. And it's really disappointing. She's in this, and she is kind of the the centre point of the entire investigation of what's going on in the island but then all of a sudden she sort of disappears slightly disappointing because I wanted to see much more of her but you know that that's a that's a small gripe on my part to be honest I just wanted to see more uh, from her but the dialogue is fantastic from everybody you know the title is a tongue twister we know this. <laughs> But and, and it doesn't help when you're marketing a film like this. You know, what do you want to go and see? Well, we'll just go and see that one in screen two, you know, because we, we haven't got time to say that. But rest assured, this is a film that absolutely captures your heart. I mean, it just it just made me sit there with a smile on my face. And then I got a little bit teary towards the end as well. Just a delightful film from start to finish. You big softy. You're I know, softy. I know. The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society. It's a big thumbs up from Mark. Uh, second today, then. The Leisure Seeker. Starring Dame Helen Mirren and Donald Sutherland. Ah, oh, I've seen, I've seen, uh, yeah, I've seen the adverts. For this. Yes, yes. So this is a story of a runaway couple played by Helen Mirren and Donald Sutherland who go on an unforgettable journey in their faithful old RV that they call the Leisure Seeker, or in the film they call it Leisure Seeker, which is a little bit That's, annoying. It's Americans, isn't it? It is, yeah. And you know, I'm happy with any accent, but it was quite annoying in this film. I will say that. Um, you know, th this is a film that obviously is aimed at a certain demographic. Um, and it makes no bones about the fact that it is aimed at this demographic, you know, the older generation, but that's fine. There is a really interesting story going on here um, about these two people just wanting to escape, just to do this final trek before, you know, what they think is the inevitable. The problem is the film is a very, very depressing look at dementia. 
uh, Donald Sutherland's character has dementia. Very, very, um, it, it's, it's such a struggle to watch the film. It really is. I mean, there's moments where I was thinking, I really don't want to watch anymore because this is quite harrowing. Um, there's moments where they're in the RV and he forgets everything, absolutely everything. So his wife, played by Helen Mirren, has to basically keep prodding and poking him. So when they set up camp, uh, she gets out the old photos and she goes, do you know who this is? Do you know who this is? And it is truly heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. But at the same time, I understand why this is in the film, you know, because we don't have films that deal with real life issues like this a lot. You know, m most films are escapism, but this is true life right down to the very bone. I mean, even Helen Mirren's uh, character has a few problems as well. So you just kind of sit there thinking, yeah, this is this is real tough, but this is real life. You know, the, there's no escaping from it. So they, they go off on this lovely road trip. However, because they are of a certain age, and I will say this because my mum does exactly the same, they turn their mobile phones off. So all of the kids are panicking, thinking, where have they gone? We don't know what's happening. What are they doing? They've got their phone off. They can't be contacted. Obviously, they just want to go off and have this wonderful road trip. Um, the, the film mainly focuses on the health issues though there are a few jokes here and there which do slightly lighten the mood i could have done with a lot more though to be honest because it is far too serious um but at the same time as i said that's kind of what you want from something like this um there you know these small humorous moments aside i think at times it does get a little bit muddled in what it's trying to say and also it feels like it's saying the same thing time and again i mean at two hours you think that's a long time to be saying uh, to be talking about dementia in a film that is basically a road trip film, really. Um, you know, Donald Sutherland and Dame Helen Mirren, fantastic in this. You know, I could watch Dame Helen Mirren read the phone book. She's that good. She is. But at the same time, I think the film is a little bit too languid in what it's trying to say. So, you know, there is a great story there, a very real story in there. But at two hours, I think it slightly outstays its welcome. bit long. The Leisure Seeker at the cinema now. And I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. The Guernsey Literary and, Literary and Potato Peel Society. No, you've got it wrong. Have I? Yeah, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. Oh, I missed the pie. You that's missed the pie. Like, that's not like me, is it? <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll have a break. We'll come back and we'll take a look at what's new on Blu-ray and DVD after some Neil Diamond. Um, movies with DVD and Blu-ray releases for part two. What you got for us? So, uh, a film for the kids, I think, here. Ferdinand, which is a story of Ferdinand, a bull with a big heart, who is mistaken for a dangerous beast. He is captured and taken from his ranch. Determined to return to his family, he rallies a misfit team of animals on the ultimate adventure. Now, I didn't know this, but this is actually based on a series of books. Oh, OK. Yeah, uh, by Munro Leaf and Robert Lawson. Uh, so, interesting to go into a film like this and not know anything about it, to be honest, but these books are apparently massive sellers actually the film is a good deal of fun and i wasn't really expecting it it's bright it's colorful it's quite joyful as well and the storyline zips along at a furious pace um ferdinand is as i said he's this big cuddly bull and i know that sounds kind of weird um but he is he you know he doesn't want to hurt anybody at all and yet he's taken because they think oh no he's this scary bull he's going to do bad things so they take him away and what happens is he, he goes on this road trip with these other animals who have sort of been caught up in the aftermath as well um and they're not all bulls there are some other ones as well and uh the, you know it's it's kind of ones that what what the film is trying to say is what's going to happen towards the end is what happens to a lot of animals towards the end of their life i'm not going to say any more because it is a little bit upsetting obviously oh. so that's what the film is trying to say is going to happen obviously ferdinand is rallying against that and he doesn't want that to happen at all so he enlists these other animals to help him as well there is one joke in the film that had me laughing for three minutes and it is the joke of a bull in a china shop <laughs> it is in there it is perfectly done as well it is absolutely fantastic um ferdinand himself lovable character absolutely from start to finish just one of those characters who you just love to watch on screen as well he's a bit of a klutz i will say that he sort of bumbles his way through a bit like an inspector gadget type uh, yeah. character as well and he continues to push his way through this road trip through his own stupidity and others as well he's ably abetted as well by this goat called lupe who is mad as a box of frogs she is completely crazy but very very funny at the same time um it's it's kind of like you know when you have those uh, comedic films where you have uh, those animated films where you've got a comedic sidekick this is what lupe is and she is absolutely brilliant she just she makes 
makes the film, really, to be honest with you. There is also another uh, character in there called Paco, who is a dog. He's not in it that much, which is a shame, because he has some great interaction with Ferdinand. So I would have liked to have seen more of Paco be in there, but at the same time, you know, that's me quibbling once again. But they all come together, and they all do this bonkers road trip. Uh, the voice cast, not huge at all. Uh, the ex-wrestler John Cena does Ferdinand. He's okay. He's perfectly fine, but he hasn't got that standout voice, you know, like Eddie Murphy has. Yeah, in Donkey. Sh- yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, it, it doesn't really stand out that much. Comedian Kate McKinnon, who was in the Ghostbusters film recently, uh, she does Lupe. I've got to say, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Like, laugh out loud funny at everything she said. It is just absolutely bonkers. Um, what happens is, towards the end, the film gets quite serious. So there's a very serious finale, which actually stopped me dead in my tracks. I'm thinking, wow, I can't believe they've actually gone here with this with this comedy with this animated comedy and it works very very well really impressed with what they did right at the end as well so genuinely surprised about how much i liked this film ferdinand doesn't end up as burgers please tell me he doesn't okay so spoiler no he doesn't good Whew. that's ferdinand out now on blu-ray and dvd sounds like great fun something the kids would like uh your your last offering is this another kids movie no it sounds like it should be a kids movie but it's not brigsby bear brigsby bear uh this is a story of a boy well a boy turned man called james whose favorite show is brigsby bear adventures however this show is only for one person James. So when the show abruptly ends, James' life changes forever and he sets out to finish the story himself. Now this is written and directed by the US, I guess you could call them a band, but then they're a spoof comedic tri- uh, trio as well called The Lonely Island. Do you know these, Wayne, at all? Never heard of them. Okay, okay. So they're led by Andy Samberg, who is in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, a very funny uh, comedy show. They also did, about three years ago, uh, a comedy, sh- like a spoof film about the music industry called Pop Star Never Stop, Never Stopping. And it was absolutely fantastic, but nobody saw it, which was a real shame. So what they've done is they've got their s- second film out called Brigsby Bear. It's a bit of a blend of the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, if you've ever seen that TV show, uh, some classic John Hughes high school movies, so like Ferris Bueller's Day off and then slightly twisted like the mighty boosh and i know this all sounds completely bonkers and it, it kind of is this is this is how close brigsby bear is it's both surreal and very very real as well that's the thing it takes this bizarre situation of james kind of being well he is homeschooled he's not allowed out of the house and his parents sort of homeschool him and also they make this tv show for him so when he goes to bed his dad played by mark hamill as well makes this show where he dresses up as a bear and then the next day they show them this episode <laughs> and he's got i think it's a, a, around 700 videotapes in his house of every single episode he's got all of the books he's written out all of the dialogue and everything so he's really geeking out on this show then what happens is when all of a sudden people turn up and they go this show's not real he's like i don't understand so he has to go from what he thinks is reality to actually what is real reality you know like he doesn't know what it's like in the outside world we do we can just step outside and we're fine but he doesn't understand any any of that at all so he starts to become friends with some of these people from his real family because he was kidnapped as well this is the thing yeah i know it's, it's lots like, of twists in this so many movie, twists isn't there? yeah so he becomes friends with these people and all of a sudden they start to uh listen to him talking about brigsby ben they're like where can we see this he's like oh i've got all of the videotapes so then they put them online and they all go viral he then wants to finish Brigsby Bear, like give it a proper ending because he knows that there are problems with it and he knows that actually his dad was lying to him. So then him and these guys go off and make this wonderful, like, finish for Brigsby Bear. But along the way, he gets caught up in a few little problems because he doesn't know what real life is like as well. So, you know, there's there's things in there. That, you know, it's kind of like a coming-of-age tale crossed with, like, nerd culture as well, which obviously, you know, is completely real as well. So it's it's just one of those films that... Underneath all of the jokes, everything is so very, very real. And you don't kind of expect it. You expect to laugh a lot. And you do, don't get me wrong, but it is one of those films that I just think is such a brilliant satire on nerd culture, geek culture in general, that it kind of caught me off guard at how good this film was. And yet... It's such a small release. It's a bit of a shame. You've sold this to me. Excellent. I'll, I'll, I'll be straight off to the to the local DVD shop when, when, I, when I come off there looking for this. Yeah, yeah, no, you've got to. Honestly, it is absolutely fantastic. As I said, it's hilarious, but there is so much real life in it. Brigsby Bear and something for the kids, Ferdinand, out now on uh, Blu-ray and DVD. Mark Searby, as always, thank you for your knowledge. Thank you. Um, next week you shall be back. Um, can you just do one thing for me before you go? Yeah, go on. Can you go? Oh! <laughs> okay.
Ooh. No, 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 no. I want you to go. Ooh. Ooh. No, no, no. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Go. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, you meant it's meant to sound like this. Ooh.